My disorder causes me to fall asleep without warning several times during the day. I will fall asleep wherever I can, even if that's sitting up. I've had episodes while out at nightclubs and people have often thought that I was passed out drunk. What is probably the most inconvenient place that I've had an episode? I don't know about inconvenient. Oh, Granny's funeral. <laughs> there have been situations where people are like, wake her up. It serves no purpose because I'm going to pass out. What just happened to justice? A typical morning for me, three o'clock is when my first alarm goes off. Uh, get ready to go to the gym. I'll head to the gym at around four, get back to the apartment, take a shower, and then go back to sleep for like a, my morning nap. Narcolepsy type one is a neurological disorder where my brain can't regulate my sleep cycles. This will cause me to fall asleep without warning. Narcolepsy affects your sleep at night. Most people don't know that you will be experiencing, some people call it insomnia. I say is fragmented sleep, which means I wake up every hour on the hour. I always tell people it's not waking up that's the issue, it's staying up that's the problem. Narcolepsy is an everyday thing, so it comes with the territory no matter what I do. There's no off button, <laughs> there's no like, not having it for a day. I don't know if I'm going to be up, you know, come uh, an hour or so. There were indicators of my narcolepsy throughout my childhood. Earliest that I can think about having an episode is probably like second grade. I remember being in class and trying to like pop rubber bands on my wrist. I'm like trying to eat things, drink things, do anything to keep myself awake. And I physically could not stay awake no matter what I did. And I was like, I don't think, I think this is normal. Hi Zuko. I didn't have an official diagnosis until I was 18. So what was it like having a sister with narcolepsy? Well, first of all, we didn't know you had narcolepsy. <laughs> <laughs> he was just sleepy and liked to take naps <laughs> and didn't think anything was wrong with it. It kind of just like a personality trait. Yeah. Like Justice is just sleepy. Justice is just sleepy. With justice, she's taking a nap. It, look, there she sleep again. How did it feel to finally realize what was going on? Having a diagnosis just allowed me as some like confirmation as in like, okay, now I have an explanation because it's hard to tell people you have narcolepsy but you don't have any um, evidence to support it. People are like, don't really believe you. Sleep episodes can happen literally anywhere. You name it, I've probably fallen asleep there. They can last from five minutes, 20 minutes, uh, just depending. I'm never out longer than like 25 minutes usually. I really try my best to organize my day so episodes won't occur. If I schedule a nap, I know I won't have an episode. But there are certain, certain situations where your schedule doesn't just permit you to have to do that. What is probably the most inconvenient place that I've had an episode in front of you where like, either you had to like step in. Inconvenient? Like, I don't know about inconvenient. Oh, Granny's funeral. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why my dad would play my grandmother's funeral in the middle of like my nap. If you don't know I have narcolepsy, I just look like an a-hole. So uh, those type of situations and those type of places are always kind of uncomfortable for me just because I understand what the perception is. Granny understood my situation, you know what I mean? With narcolepsy, they're always naturally attached to some level of embarrassment that comes with it. And especially when people negatively point it out or draw negative attention towards it. Being made sometimes as a spectacle in a negative way, it's definitely an embarrassment because uh, again, this is something I have zero control over. We are going to prime nap time here pretty soon. So mm -hmm. if we go to the park, you're probably gonna have to drive. Well, I might, you know, have an episode, uh, but. <laughs> That's why you got me on takeover. Yeah, such is life. So it is what it is. Yeah. The number one question I get when I tell people I have narcolepsy is they bring up driving. Driving naturally, even without narcolepsy, can be a dangerous thing, you know what I mean? I make sure just to be very aware and cognizant about putting myself in positions where I'm not putting myself in danger. I have a risk of episodes happening every day. If an episode is going to occur, you can't fight an episode over. There have been situations where people are like, wake her up. It, it serves no purpose, because I'm going to pass out. You kind of just have to let it happen and then I'm gonna come to on my own. You know how they put babies in cars when they want them to fall asleep? Yeah, that, yeah, the same thing for me, for sure. What just happened to Justice? Um, just, uh, 
guess you call it episode, and she went to sleep. Sometimes I'm able to wake her up, and she'll wake up. Sometimes she'll sleep through it. Uh, it depends on justice in her body sometimes. Usually what I tell people is don't wake her up, let her, let her be. It's not a big deal. It's such a light sleep. So I can hear what's going on around me. When I was younger, I used to think I had superpowers because I could like play back conversations that I was sleep for. It's the trippiest thing. Other people may wonder what's going on. It's funny to see people sleeping out in public. So sometimes that brings some attention. So I just make sure to just to keep her safe. Just making sure people respect her and that her episode is not a spectacle, right? It's just, it's just normal. She's just doing what she does. There is a level of protection that somebody with a sleeping disorder, specifically narcolepsy, relies on their friends and family to be able to advocate for them because I'm in a situation where I cannot protect myself. I'm extremely vulnerable right now and I may need you to be my voice of reason um, in a situation where I'm not able to be that person for myself. I've been so fortunate in my life to be surrounded by people who are very supportive, protective, and understanding. Oh, I'm tired. Right after it, I usually just, you know, act like nothing happened. Um, that's kind of the best thing about having friends and family who understand the disorder. Literally, I'll wake up and we'll just continue, like, without missing a beat. I understand narcolepsy is something not a lot of people understand, not a lot of people know about. I have narcolepsy. Of course I'm gonna take a nap every day. And that I could use my experience to educate, but also to advocate. And that's what I've gained from posting on TikTok more about my narcolepsy and sharing my feedback and understanding and stories. I don't take offense when people ask, ask questions. That doesn't offend me. But then if someone would comment and they'd be like, you're faking it, I'd be like, I wish. <laughs> I wish I was faking it. Somebody being like, you're just tired, you're X, Y, Z. Like, I guess that's your opinion. Also, not the reality. But if you already have in your mind that you're not open to listening and hearing and understanding, you're not going to. So it's just more so not entertaining people who just come on your page with nonsense. Do I find narcolepsy frustrating to live with? Yes and no. Yes in the sense of, of course it's frustrating. Like, you have a neurological disorder where you can't stay awake, you know? But no in the sense of life's all about perspective. There are challenging days where I'm like, this day was shot. Um, my disorder was whooping my butt today. But understanding as a young person that you still can live a functional life, that you still can achieve the things you want to achieve, I think that is the biggest understanding that you aren't like chained in by your disorder. And if the worst thing in my life is that I have to allocate a few extra naps and be a little more cognizant about when I drive, I'll take that 100%.